All right, guys, we got a we got a real treat here. As you can see, we're already uh, into our radio on the left went dead. Had to get out the older unit. Uh, this is a 1999 Dodge Durango SLT with a 5.9 liter Magnum V8. We know it is a 5.9 liter based on that 10th digit of the VIN being a Z for 5.9 liter Magnum. Um, it's red. It's, uh, I don't know, here. That is the Schrader valve cap and a hint of uh, what I'm about to show you. We've got uh, a fuse here, fuse number 29, or uh, relay number 29. But uh, I don't know, let's show you. I'll show you the outside first. It's uh, sunbeat, got lots of moss on it. Still some green stuff growing here. It's got uh, Monroe running boards that uh, I don't know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't step on that with your weight. It's got a blown tire that occurred when it was being drug home. It went flat naturally because honestly I didn't even look at the date on these tires but I know they are ancient. Uh, this is 1090 but that's not right. I think the date codes on the inside. These I don't know what are the Mastercraft radials? I think all four of them are. I don't know. There's a date code in there somewhere, but uh, I know they're old because it's been sitting since the very latest, probably June of ten. It's probably been sitting since '09. That is fourteen years. She's been sitting for fourteen years. Now, the cool thing about this, it's an SLT. As we can see, it's got heated power mirrors. We've got auto door locks, window locks. All four windows are powered. We've got lights with fog lights. We've got cruise control, airbags, driver and passenger. I think that was required by 99. We've got a full instrument panel with temp. Um, charging, I guess, what is it? Alternator gauge. Um, it's uh, escaping me what the hell that gauge is called. Amperage, voltage, whatever. Um, we've got tax, speedo, oil pressure gauge, fuel, and gear selector. It is manual, not digital. We've got a Chrysler CD and cassette stereo. We've got AC, fan, heat, climate control, defrost, rear wiper. We've got two power ports here with a cigarette lighter. Um, these are, this is, this is, I should say, the Infinity sound system. There's our front plate, which was inside the vehicle and fared much better. That is, a wall hanger, that's a nice clean one. I think it's been in the vehicle the entire time. I think I found it under the back seat actually. And we've got a really old Mountain Dew can. Bunch of change, a battery. Um, here's the insurance card that I'm not gonna show you. I actually didn't see this until just now. Effective date, February of 09 to August of 09. So that makes sense. So, 2009 is about right. Progressive. Uh, there's a lug nut and a brake spring. That was from us. Ooh, our channel locks. Forgot that was down there. Um, it does have four-wheel drive. High and low range. We've got the overhead console. 
with rear AC. I've actually never seen this before. It's the first time looking at the rear AC on a 99 Durango. It's kind of weird. I wonder if they made them with the sunroof and rear AC, and I wonder if they would then move it back there. Uh, front courtesy light, rear courtesy light. This is, oh, if I can, that sucks. Can I get the jack down and open the door? Look at that, professional. Uh, some weight reduction. Some of that was not there when we started and has appeared. We've got corn cobs, skittles, a map of Wisconsin. This is a three-seater vehicle. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it's got a bunch of junk. But as I was saying, it comes with third row seats fold down, second row and third row fold down. It's a complimentary mouse nest and seat cushions everywhere. I see a scraper in there. Wood, mosquito dope, another map. It's got all kinds of goodies in there actually. A VGA cables, some sort of book. It's dirty. It uh, smells like ass actually. Oops. And uh, you just watched me destroy the vehicle. Oh, she's totaled. I just totaled it, guys. Oh, no. Okay. I might actually be able to do that. There we go. Oops. Oh, no. Doors shut pretty nice, though. That one is a Goodyear Wrangler. That is, I believe, the full-size spare. That is on it. Nice bumper. This side's about the same story. Got some oil in there. Anyway, long story short, it's been sitting for 14 years. Uh, jumper box does hook to it, so we'll do that. Can hear things and stuff and things, but uh, what you don't hear is a fuel pump. Now, the tank was empty. Put a few gallons in it. Well, I think we put, what, a gallon in it. But, no fuel pump. So, she's got 158,884. Honestly, not that much, but kind of makes sense being parked as long as it has been. It does crank over, and it sounds pretty A-OK. -okay. Look at the oil pressure come up. And I'm just under 40, about 30 cranking. Now, we did take off the upper, the top of the intake there. Put a little fuel down on it, and it did fire up, and it sounded okay. So, it's got a good engine. Transmission? Don't know. Don't know yet. Don't know why it was parked, actually. Um... Oh, we do have an oil change sticker I'm realizing here. It says next service due 161 884. 161 884. It says oil filter was done at 158 884. Wait a second, guys. Uh, let me let me get this right here. This is a Belt Plain, Minnesota service sticker. Uh, yeah, guys, that says one sixty one eight eighty four next service due. It says it was, you know, it had an oil change at 158,884 on, does that say, it 
something something 09 126 of 09 right am i seeing that right i think i am i think this is 126 of 09 it had an oil filter at 158 is that 824 or 884 I'd like to say 884 because the next service is due at 884. But that could be 804. Why would they put 84 if this was 04? That doesn't look like an 8. That kind of does. Um, interesting. It has an oil change at the mileage that it currently reads. What do you say? Fuel pump dies at the shop. Shop says car's screwed. Uh, you owe us money. Yeah, well, not really you owe us money. It's a, uh, here's what's wrong with it. We'll fix it and charge you this much. And a guy says, uh, no, thank you. And parks it. Because our issue is that it has no fuel pump. That would make sense that it goes into a shop. It's an oil change, comes back with no fuel pump. So, what I have done is there's a 10 amp fuse in the dash here that the computer will run through to provide signal to turn this relay on and off. Now, this relay gets power from this 20 amp fuse. I have swapped these fuses, and they are good. I have swapped this relay with a good relay. Um, and we have power here. So, that leads me to either the wire going to the fuel pump is bad, which likely not, and instead that the fuel pump is bad. So, that's cool. Side note, we notice this when we're looking at it. Plug this in, and that thing makes a lot of noise. So, I'm going to say that the ABS does not work. Great because it does have a ABS module. Anyway, Schrader valve, no fuel pressure. Obviously with no fuel, it will not start. So that's where we're at. I'm under here and I got my jack stands and my jack. And I'm starting to look under here. And so to do fuel pump, you gotta take tank out. Take tank out, you got to remove that I guess, what is it, an EVAP hose off the charcoal canister? You move it off of the charcoal canister and it goes with the tank. Then up there you gotta remove your, your two vent hoses, which are right there. And that's what I was about to do, your vent and your fuel in. Now once you do that, you gotta remove your straps, which those are 5 eighths nuts. Right back there, if you kinda see it above the parking brake cable. Both sides, lower the tank, unplug the fuel line. Unplug the connector, pull the tank out, change the thing, you know, the fuel pump. I might show that a little more, but that's what we've got ahead of us here. Anyway, these are a uh, seven millimeters, what I'm using to break them loose, and they were uh, stuck, and they uh, did not want to uh, break free. But they uh, definitely have got to break free. Guys, this is the hose on my hand. It uh, is not going well. We're uh, cutting those. But uh, I realized, find the good music, the uh, leaf spring clips here that hold the thing on. These are what I need on my 90 Caravan, and they're the same on this 99 Durango. So that's uh, really cool. I'm gonna have to get some of those when I go to the junkyard to get hoses now, plus a uh, Fuel uh, pump. I win. Get fucked. Now we gotta go over to the front 
and take the straps off. So I'm gonna support the tank with a jack, and then I'm gonna take my impact, and hopefully those 5 ace uh, studs or nuts or whatever they are come out. Updates. I uh, got the rear strap off. The nut spun a little bit, and then it spun out of the uh, welded on nut or insert nut, whatever's up there. Nut cert. Uh, that one. I shouldn't have used the impact. I had to end up taking that one off with my my big wrench. But uh, that one, I, well, I started with the impact on that one, then I fucked up there. And then I went over here and I got the impact on that one. It didn't break off and it stopped. So then I got smart and used this with some uh, liquid wrench. But uh, I think I broke off the welded nut. So now it, the whole stud just spins. But the end of the stud has a, like a torque bit. So, and luckily this is the one that you can almost get at kind of with a wrench or something or like a a ratchet that you can like slide all the way through um, I'm gonna try to get on that and then get on this with another wrench and hopefully I can get the nut off of the stud otherwise we're gonna slice and deal with that with the tank out uh, we'll see how that goes here's my game plan guys here's my stud that I did get out Here's my 3 ace pass-through ratchet. That's actually a 15 millimeter um, versus a 5 ace. 15 seems to fit better. And then here is a, like a, like a, I think it's an E10, like reverse torque spit on another 3 ace ratchet. We're gonna try wedge this one in the slot there where I've got it, like between the fuel tank and the frame rail. And then we're gonna take this one and Actually, you spin this one clockwise to spin the nut counterclockwise. I believe that's how it's going to go. Anyway, we're going to do something like that. And hopefully, hopefully, if you focus. Sorry, I'm using a flashlight instead of my uh, light on my phone because my phone's about dead. So, you know, this is, it's a Duracell. It's not cheap. It's probably really cheap. I don't remember. Yeah, really, really professional work here. We're going to try that. Well, naturally, I had to uh, cut through the good fuel strap. That one back there was rusty. So I uh, cut it by hand because I didn't want to, you know, blow myself up. Something about preservation or whatever. Cut it to where it was weak enough that the tin snips could snip through it. And both fuel straps are out. I believe it is resting on the jack. So I'm going to lower it. Disconnect down right now. I uh, popped the quick connect on the fuel line off. Well, I just gotta get the electrical connector out. And uh, tank's out, guys. I'm gonna have to, when I pull the one down at the junkyard, I'll look to see what I can do to get that thing out. I'll try to grab some studs. I bet you, you just have to, I wonder if you can get up top there to get at the, the nut, or you have to drill it out, cut it up, put a nut cert in, I don't know, we'll figure that out. But tank's on the ground, so I'm just going to get the connector off, pull it out, and that's where I'm going to leave it tonight. I'm going to drag it up front, and then i got to go to the junkyard, because this thing ain't worth buying a, a new fuel pump in right now. I'm going to get one at the U-Pole real cheap, throw it in there, and uh, see if it runs, see if it moves. Um, and then it, if it moves, uh, it's deserving of some used tires. Get some used tires on it. And then, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to get this thing drug home, uh, the rears were locked up because they're drums, naturally. Had to get up in the air, beat the tires off, beat the drums off, and then pull the pads apart. Like, we pulled the, uh, like, the pad material off of the, uh, the actual, like, metal pad backing. And then was able to slide the drums back on. And then put the tire back on, and then it would roll around. The fronts are disc, and they, uh, they weren't locked up. Put... I know they're stuck because you can smell, I could smell them when I rolled it into the driveway. So they were, they're a little sticky. Not that, I don't think anybody pressed the brake pedal in it, but they were sticking a little bit. They uh, get some springs, use pads and stuff for the junkyard. We're looking for a real cheap, quick flip, hopefully. 
not necessarily quick, but a cheapish budget budget flip because the price was right on this thing. We were very low triple digits. So, yeah, all right, I'm gonna call that for you guys. I'm gonna disconnect that electric connector, pull this down, get it out of here, and that's uh, where we're gonna leave it. If it weren't for that stupid uh, setup there coming out, I had this done probably an hour and a half ago. So I'm sitting here sliding with a dull, or cutting with a dull blade and a dull tin snips. Whatever. Nice. I need to put the jack pack under and get my stand out to uh, maneuver this bad boy out. Anyway. Yeah. Locking ring looks good. I was worried that would be rusty. It's a uh, knot. Good. That's savings right there, guys. Granted, I think if you put the locking ring with the pump when you took it, it probably they probably wouldn't charge you. Look at that. Nice. And the uh, body looks good up there. Nice. And yes, I can get to the top of that nut stud thing with the tank out, so I'll be able to address that. Um, yeah, what a mess. Um, I can smell fuel. It smells old. It doesn't smell completely like varnish, just kind of old fuel. And there wasn't, it was empty, empty. So most of what's in there is what we had put in it, so. I don't know, I figure, I wonder if they just siphoned the thing out when they parked it. It'd be a, an idea. I'm gonna roll the hood down a little bit here. Oh, shut the flashlight off. All right, cool. Yeah, so she's out. I'm going to probably put it back on the ground here. Call it a night. Yes, in case things went haywire, like the impact catching something on fire, did have the whole extinguisher here in present. All right, so next you want to remove your locking tab. To do that, first you want to pop this guy back, and then you want to punch with, ideally, the only way you should do it, is with a punch that is brass so it won't spark and you punch it counterclockwise to make it loose and then it comes off and then you just gotta wiggle this guy off in some fashion I'm gonna do that and then this is out well that wasn't gonna read fuel right no I heard some sloshing around in there oh and people recommend you clean all the dust and shit out I'll uh I'll be cleaning the tank up pretty well um, what do you think that stuff is? Basically varnish. Looks like something came apart. The filter, there's the float for the fuel. Something came apart in there that was probably part of that and has something to do with why it doesn't work. Diaphragm, maybe? But hey, plastic tanks uh, look real nice. The fuel honestly doesn't look that bad. It, I think there's like a gallon and a half that came out and we dumped a lot of that in. It looks fine. And you know what that is? So that might be what was left of the old fuel. And obviously all that's new stuff. Ish. Kind of mixed together. It's not bad. Good. I'll get a new one of those. Put her in. So we're uh, at Upo under this. I think it's an 01 Durango. I think I said previously that that is a 5 Ace. I got that information online. I'm pretty sure it's a 15 mil. The 15 seems to fit better. The 5 ace felt like it was going to strip out. But our 15 here spins slightly, as you can see. So that is what I'm going to use. We're going to get this tank dropped. I already cut the hose back there because the vent was already cut like prior to it coming to the uh, junkyard here. So, I think, and those were rotten. I think we'll just get new hoses at, like, O'Reilly's or Advance or something. But, yeah, we're going to get these straps off real quick, hopefully. Hopefully, salvage both straps so I can uh, not have to buy new ones because these ones don't look terrible. They've got some rust on them, but uh, we'll see. It's got a new muffler under here. It's shiny. All right, I'm going to do that. Well... 
that without that locking ring put up a fight. This is what's disintegrated in my tank, is the sock. And look, this one's got a, a pickup, or not a pickup, but a float that uh, probably works. So this one's in pretty okay shape, despite that shit. So we got, we got a nice used um, pump that probably hopefully works, maybe. That'd be cool. Um, what is this, like 20 bucks versus, what, like 200 bucks that O'Reilly's wants for it? Because I think this is for 98 201 and then they changed them. Probably because they... Crap. I don't know. We'll see. I have not a clue, actually. So, sweet. Driver's side. Side, rear. Oh, kind of forgot to show you. I was in the, I was in the zone, guys. Okay, I got the. There's the old one right there, in that mess. Here's our new guy in. I uh, had the tank out, I uh, rinsed it out real real well, and scrubbed it, dried it. I'll tell you, plastic tanks are a godsend. I shouldn't say that, but they're very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit of scrub and clean, and it's brand new inside. Got our new fill pump in here, hopefully it works. Thankfully, our locking ring that came with the vehicle was in good shape, unlike the one at the junkyard. Got that locked in. What I'm about to do here is put our new fuel hose. Well, I guess I can't put it on. I, I should go put it on the vehicle side, so I gotta cut the old hose off, get this guy on, get our new vent hose on as well. And then I just need to look at how to mount the straps, and then this is ready to go back in. Brand new fuel tank straps. Man, those cost a lot. Look at that. Nobody will ever notice. Right, so, I think we're going to warm up for the day by uh, putting some new meat on her. It'll, uh, Help get it off the ground a little more too, make it easier to work on. But we'll see how those bad boys look on there. So you know what I just realized actually? It's the same brand of tire that's on it right now. Oh, those are HTR, these are LTRs. They're, st they're both Mastercraft, love it. So, well, yeah, we'll throw those on real quick. Not real quick. I'm going to have to pound some studs out on this side as well and put some new ones in.
Usually they don't put up that much of a fight installing stunts, but I sacrificed a lug nut for that. And so we got the right tool. So it acts as a spacer for like as if you had a tire on there, and it's got a bearing here so it doesn't grind up against the hub there and lock up. So this should make that go really easy. We're gonna we're gonna do that real quick and we're gonna see. a little better. I'm gonna do that a couple more times here. The back side that's against the shed's gonna be a little more difficult but whatever. We'll uh, speed run this front side. Front side doesn't need the uh, studs done. It was just that bad tire back there. That looks like a vehicle once again. Get it scrubbed up, it'll look great. Well, it's relative, but you know. Those tires look nice on it. They're a little bigger, but they fit the wheel wells better. Not bad. Just need to get that fuel tank back in and make sure it runs. Get it washed up. Get plates on it. Well, I got it out. I had to grind it out. It is a welded nut on the top here. That is no longer welded. So we got that out. What we're gonna have to do is get a stud and through bolt it. So that'll be fun. All right, so this is what I came up with. I got a new stud. I got a nut with two washers here. On the back side, I've got a nut, two washers and a lock washer. I got that bolted in and then I've got this um, plastic locking nut that'll go over the actual strap. It's going to be down a little bit, but that's uh, what it's going to be because I'm not welding it. Get mad. We'll see how well that does. That should be fine. I don't think it will cause very much play, if any, in the tank but we'll cross that road when we get to it. So, um, about that time, put the tank in. Um, I'm waiting on some final paint to dry on the strap, so what I'm gonna do, actually, is cut those old hoses out up there. And hopefully that the pipes are okay enough for new hoses. Cool, we're, we're almost there. Tires on it, fuel. Hopefully, hopefully that fuel pump works. Um, we'll see. All right, guys. Uh, she's up there. Got my new straps in. Both of them are up there. Uh, got the vent hose over there hooked up. Got the vent and fuel hose in over here hooked up. Got the sender plugged in. And the main fuel line plugged in. Let's, uh, let's do some final checks here. I don't think that was off before, but uh, she's low, I would say. So we might want to go get some 
cool that. Can, there it goes. Probably want to top that off. What do we got for oil? For being new oil, it's pretty uh, brownish. Might have some gas in it or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's full in here. Uh, some really brown looking crap. That's lovely. Always love to see that in a Mopar transmission. What do we got for brake fluid? Oh, there's something in there. I think uh, coolant is where we need to enter off and go find. So I'm going to go find some coolant, hook this guy up, and I will bring you right back for the first key turn. Cross your fingers, guys. Off the coolant, it was only a little low. Got us hooked up here. I saw sparks, so something's taking voltage. Come on. I think I heard a fuel pump. Yeah, I hear one. A little low on battery. And it did come off at E just a little bit. Ah, shit. I don't think we got good continuity here. How about that? I just heard that fuel pump. Now it sounded good. Oh. Well, she's running. Sounds like it's got a miss, but I don't blame it. Yeah, we came way off empty. Good. I think I poured a gallon or two into it. It's going back down. Let it run here. Kind of idle. I can smell a little bit of old gas, but not bad. So maybe what was in the lines. I hear spark, you hear that? I almost kind of hear a uh, spark plug wire arcing. Yeah, I hear a spark plug wire arcing over here somewhere. So yeah, that one right there. I see a bad wire, it's arcing off right there. See it, you guys can see it. So there's our miss. So I'll have to get a new plug wire for sure. Probably needs plugs, wires. I'll take the plugs out, look at them. We'll see what we got. But uh, we got fuel pressure, it's running. Manifold leak or something back here or that exhaust flange. Plenty of oil pressure. We're charging. Yeah, I can feel that miss. I don't want to move it very far, but does it go into gear? Now reverse. drive. I got nothing from the transmission right now. I have to check. Oh. Oh. Okay, so we got something going on with that linkage, I think.
power steering. Kinda. Alright, we might have a bad transmission. That would be sad. I think it needs to be in neutral to spin the pump, so we'll leave it running in neutral. Need to get that uh, mist figured out real quick. But I don't know if we got anything. Hard to say. Bone dry! She's dry. I'm gonna have to add some. Oh, well, guys, uh, dumbass here uh, left it in the transfer case in neutral. She moves. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she moves. Well, that's what I dug out of that uh, plug. There's two completely eaten off. Started it back up sounds the same, so uh, yeah, we're missing two plug wires, guys. I'm gonna go dig through the stash and find something. Well, I got a new battery cable on it. I'll show you that, I guess. I think the battery I got in is junk. I had to jump it. But we'll see. The alternator works. So, yeah, new battery cable. That's cool. I left the other one because it works. I, uh, what did I find? I found a, a, like, a magnet stick down there. So that was cool. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna change that trans fluid. I want to see if this does the same thing again. I wonder if that's got anything to do with my speed sensor not working. Yeah, my speed sensor moves when that's plugged in. So it's not the speed sensor that's broke. Weird. Now they have to get one of those. That's annoying. Well, cool, I guess. ABS, fuel light, all the goodies. Alright, we're back. Uh, I went to O'Reilly's. I got me a set of plug wires. And uh, we got those plug wires in. Let me turn. There, you can read this. Come back down. We've put uh, three miles on it. Sounds good. Radio, everything works. We hear that loud ABS pump that needs to be replaced. We're going to unplug that. Because that goes when the key is off too. A little better. It's loud. It's got an exhaust leak up front, but sounds good. Dome lights now come on. Must have freed up that switch. But uh, yeah, when that ABS thing is unplugged, the speedo doesn't, or the uh, speedo doesn't work, and naturally the odometer doesn't turn. Lights all work except one blinker on the driver's side front. Apparently something in the rear doesn't work either, but whatever. Got new wipers on it, got that all done. Clean up the windshield, yeah. Runs good, it sounds great. Fix that exhaust leak and it's uh, good to go. Nice battery I've got in it is junk so it probably won't restart but you never know oh almost I guess one thing I did want to add is that uh, 
it definitely does have a transmission issue. Um, it's only got second and third, no overdrive, and it's throwing code PO753, which is overdrive solenoid circuit. Now, it could be a couple things based on what I've read, and I want to do a little more research. Obviously, it could be the overdrive solenoid, or commonly the plug into the transmission gets old and corroded. So we're going to look into that next. Well, I think I'm going to look into the brakes get it moving and stopping well and then I can troubleshoot the transmission more but uh that's a will it run and drive after 14 years yes yes it will will it restart no because I've got a shot battery but the alternator charges real well 